Switzerland has been fascinating many visitors due to the impressive Alps, its traditional culture, cities, heritage as well as its wonderful villages. While some of you may prefer the urban areas with its busy lifestyle, there are some others that seek the tranquility feeling which they may get in the many of the Swiss villages. Although being rather small, Switzerland has an incredible diversity why one village looks very different from the other one. Having been to many different corners all over Switzerland during the past three years, I proudly present you my top 10 villages for the year 2022. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Geomographic. Switzerland is a country full of alluring villages just as this one here. I think it looks already fantastic. If you're new to this channel, my name is Jemo. I'm a Swiss traveler, mostly posting videos about Switzerland and Southeast Asia. If you like this kind of content, then definitely write in this channel here and you're most welcome to subscribe. All right, and now let's get started with number 10. This lays in the canton of Vaux and that would be wonderful Romain Mottier. In the middle of the Jura Vaudois lays this wonderful fairy tale town called Romain Mottier. It's a small medieval town that charms with its many beautiful old houses and its tranquility. Romain Mottier is a rather small town and thus it's explored quite quickly. A must visit are definitely the Abbey with its Romanesque church that was completed in the year 1030. It is one of the best preserved Romanesque churches of Switzerland. Thus, for people who are into architecture, it may be a very interesting site. Do not forget to hike around the village. In particular, the upper part of Romain Mottier is nice. There are again some more beautiful houses to see. From there, you can access a nice trail that takes you through the forest back to the village. With the sounds of the creek and the waterfall, the trail is going to feel very calming. There are two lookout points from where you will have a great view over the village. One would be just within the town itself and the other one at the nearby hill just next to the parking lot. There are many interesting attractions to visit that are within a 15 minutes radius. The nearest one would be the Cascade du Dard, a very eye-catching waterfall. Nice are also the waterfalls of the Saudide at Valorbe or the one at the Dine de Conflans. A highlight may also be the Grotte of Valorbe, a large cave full of wonderful formations. Number 9 lays in the canton of Torgau and this would be alluring Diesenhofen. This is another town that many of you might not be familiar with. Diesenhofen is nearby the famous town of Stein am Rhein and it's often named as its less touristy alternative. However, compared to Stein am Rhein, it's only located on the southern side of the river. The village on the other side is already in Germany. The probably most eye-catching part of Diesenhofen would be its old wooden bridge that is a very popular subject for photography. Besides, very interesting are the church, the towers of the city wall and of course the alleys itself with its many beautiful old houses. The streets of Diesenhofen are quite colorful, which nicely adds up to the beauty of this town. Also consider walking along the promenade at the River Rhine, it's going to feel very refreshing. Then try the local food at the restaurants, highly recommended is anything with fish. Diesenhofen can be easily reached by car as there are many parking lots around. What I however would suggest you to do is to come here by boat as the journey to Diesenhofen is very enjoyable. You may start the trip from Schaffhausen and on your way back you could do another stopover at Stein am Rhein. Number 8 is what I consider a hidden gem. It lays by the shores of the Vierwaldstättersee in the canton of Uri and this would be Bauen.
I present to you the hidden gem of this top 10 list. Bauen is one of the kind of villages that is often overlooked despite it lays in one of Switzerland's most touristy regions. The famous Vierwaldstättersee, in English Lake Lucerne, attracts many tourists due to its unique surrounding. The most famous town at the lake would be of course Lucerne. Bauen can be reached by car, but it's best to arrive here by boat from the town of Brunnen or Flüelen. It's a very scenic ride and also a great way to start your trip. Bauen is a quite small village, but it has its own surprises. A highlight is definitely the flora in here with its pretty gardens and the many palm trees. The latter grow very easily in there because of the unique climate that is present in Bauen. Thus, you may experience Mediterranean vibes at the shores of Lake Lucerne that you otherwise only would get in Ticino. There are many pretty traditional houses to see here in Bauen, including the home of the composer of the Swiss psalm, the National Anthem. Also consider taking a quick look into the church, which has a beautiful Baroque interior. After that, I recommend you to hike a bit up in order to get a great view over the town. The higher you reach, the better the view gets. Some of you may also consider hiking all the way to Selisberg, the town where Switzerland was founded. From there, you may take a boat back to Brunnen or proceed to Lucerne. During summer, the water of the lake is warm enough to consider going for a swim. However, make sure that there will be sunlight, else it may be a bit too cold for you. Number 7 is in the French-speaking part of the canton of Bern and this would be La Neuveville. We are moving back to the French-speaking part of Switzerland. La Neuveville lays at the shores of Lake Biel in the majority German-speaking canton of Bern. The name La Neuveville means new town in French, but what most of you might not know is that it's also the root for today's common English name Neville. It holds a historic status of being a city, but it more likely appears as a village. La Neuveville is small, but it has a couple of beautiful things to see. The most alluring would be this alley with the two fountains and the creek in the middle. The many Swiss, Bernese and official flags of the town nicely add up to its beauty. La Neuveville also has a couple of nice restaurants. A good place to dine would be Mille Or, which has a very cozy interior. The food is local and delicious. Good to try would be also the many other cafes, for example the new Croix Blanche. There are furthermore some cute shops, such as this one here with its many beautiful paintings, just next to it a store full of vintage items, and maybe more interesting for the people who live nearby, this shop that sells antique furniture. All in all, La Neuveville is definitely worth a visit. It's also great to combine with the nearby town of Ligertz, in particular during October when the vineyards turn golden. Both villages are only 5 minutes apart. Number 6 is in the northeast of Switzerland in the canton of Appenzell Ausserrhoden and this would be Schwelbrunn. We're moving to eastern Switzerland, to Appenzell, one of Switzerland's most cultural regions. Schwelbrunn was voted the most beautiful Swiss village in the year 2017 and I feel this choice is quite justified. It's a town that is beautiful to visit during any season of the year. What is definitely magical is when Schwelbrunn is covered in snow. The hilly landscape with Mount Sentis in the background just looks dreamy during winter. Another great plus about visiting Schwelbrunn during the snowy days is that you will find a very peaceful atmosphere up there. The village concentrates around this road 
On the left and right you'll find very beautiful traditional houses that are very typical for the canton of Appenzell. As you're walking along the road, always keep an eye to the view because there are plenty of great photo spots. Schwelbrunn is a true winter wonderland when covered in snow, but it's not any less beautiful during summer. The entire landscape will shine in its powerful green color, which feels very calming. During September, there's the tradition of Alpabzug, Alpine Descent, but it's also the time when the locals host an animal show. It's a very festive event where the farmers display their cows, which are rated by selected experts according to their beauty. The winning cows will get a new bell. During the event, you'll meet many groups of men in their traditional attire who are yodeling. This is a chance that is very important to the identity of the people of Switzerland, but even more here in the Appenzellerland. During the event of the cow show, the village of Schwelbrunn hosts a large market with many traditional products. The event is held during the second half of September and takes place during the entire day. Do not forget to stay till the end of the cow show, as after 3.30 pm there will be the uptape, a procession very similar to Alpabzug, just that you will be seeing many groups of farmers taking their cows back home. Another very important cultural event would be the Silvesterklausen, which is held on 31st of December and 13th of January. This cultural event can be only seen in a few towns of Appenzell Außerrhoden and is one of Switzerland's most important living traditions. Definitely Schwelbrunn is a great village to visit here in Switzerland. With number 5, we're moving to the upper half of this top 10 list of the most beautiful villages of Switzerland. This one here lays in the canton of Ticino, which is the Italian-speaking part of this country. This would be Forolio. In the raw and untouched Val Bavona lays this beautiful place called Forolio. It's a very well-preserved village, full of these typical, traditionally Ticine stone houses. Originally, Forolio has been mainly visited by Swiss Germans, but these days, due to social media, in particular because of Instagram, this alluring village has become more famous. During summer, and especially on weekends, numerous people make their way up to Forolio, but not only to visit this beautiful village. Just next to it is this magnificent waterfall called La Cascata di Forolio, one of the Instagram wonders of Switzerland. It's a really impressive waterfall as it's very tall and creates a lot of spray. Great spots to see the waterfall are directly at the bottom. There is by the way also a swing, hashtag Bali vibes, or further above when taking the hiking trail that starts at the upper end of the village. However, the best view to the waterfall you'll be getting at the village itself when you have all these traditional stone houses in the foreground. During my first visit, I wasn't even aware that this spot would later become so popular. Surely you have to roam around the village, walking through the many narrow alleys in between the houses, take a quick view to the church and also try the local food. Polenta with rabbit, Cheese or veal knuckle are definitely a good choice. Now let's move a little bit further up the valley to the next village called Sonlerto. Basically Forolio minus the waterfall and tourists. This town is the perfect idol. Many traditional stone houses, the feeling of originality and the sound of the crickets. Sonlerto is definitely quite a discovery and marks a great contrast to the so popular town of Forolio. What becomes very apparent when visiting Sonlerto is the landslide which happened a few centuries ago. Many large rocks have dropped and are scattered throughout the entire valley. As the locals feared more landslides might happen, they often have built their houses beneath the rocks, which these days makes them look very attractive. 
Number four lays again in the Italian-speaking part of this country. However, this time we're going to head to the canton of Galbünden to Solio. It's a village I long time didn't know about until I saw it in a photo book. I was so fascinated with this village that I eventually made my trip there during August 2020. Solio lays in the Val Bregaglia, in German Bergel, just beneath Maloja and the Upper Engadin. Following a serpent road, you eventually will arrive in Solio and find a very humble and quiet town. Upon arrival, I got to witness this beautiful double rainbow. What better sign of welcome could one wish for? The alleys of Solio are very nice. The town is full of traditional stone houses that have much resemblance with the ones of Ticino. Soon after roaming around, you'll feel that Italy is in fact very near. Just a few kilometers further down, you would arrive in Chiavenna. Thus, as alternative, you may arrive in Solio from the Italian side. Very scenic would be coming from the Basso dello Spluga, in German Splügenpass. Very interesting is the Palazzo Salis, the major piece of heritage that is part of the legacy of the noble Salis family. It has been converted into a hotel, while the interior has been pretty much fully preserved. Very nice are the hall with its medieval vibes, the garden and the restaurant. The bedrooms still look very old-fashioned, thus the hotel is a great place to spend a medieval holiday. Do not forget to take your lunch or dinner in there, they will serve very good food. As you're in the Swiss Alps, you have to consider going for a hike. Only after a few minutes of walking, you will get a perfect view over the town. I guess, latest by then, you would agree that Solio well deserves to rank among these top 10 most beautiful villages of Switzerland. In summary, Solio is the kind of alluring village which deserves more attention. It remains a secret tip up to this day, only few people are visiting this town, thus may be perfect for you. With number 3 we're moving up to the podium of the top 10 villages of Switzerland. It's this one right here where I'm standing and it's called Grimenz. If you would ask yourself which one is the most stereotypically Swiss village, then I would definitely say it's Grimenz. The village is located in the Val d'Anivier, which is just nearby the city of Sier, or in German, Sidos. The road up there is very interesting, thus your trip will be pretty exciting from the very beginning. When you arrive at the village, you may park your car just beside this restaurant La Miles. Alternatively, you may also travel here by public bus. Grimens might be smaller than many villages on this list, but it's full of interesting details, so make sure to spend enough time in here. I can recommend you to walk up these stairs from the parking lot and then enter what I consider being one of Switzerland's prettiest alleys. Latest by then, you would agree that Grimenz is a truly wonderful village. As you're strolling through the alley, pay attention to each of the many traditional wooden houses. There are many details to discover. During the warm months, the houses are decorated with plenty of geraniums, which really adds up to the beauty of this village. Even more interesting is the fact that there is a yearly competition of which house has the most beautiful flower decoration. As you can see, this village really does great efforts to present itself in its best way. It's always worth to enter the side alleys, there are plenty of great spots for taking pictures. Very interesting will be also the creek with its display of the traditional use of hydropower. You may now think the Grimmens is tiny, cozy, pretty, but then quickly explored. However, there are a couple of great things to do within and around the village. Very interesting is the Maison Grande Maman, a traditional house that has been very well preserved up to this day. 
When entering the interior, you will see how the people used to live in the past. Life back then was simple and also very hard, in particular during winter. Speaking of the cold season, Grimmens might be Switzerland's most beautiful village during winter. There won't be any geraniums, but instead plenty of snow that nicely adds up to the beauty of the houses. While Grimmens with the snow looks brilliant during the day, it looks even much better during sunset and dusk. Then, the village transforms itself into a true winter wonderland, especially with the glockenspiel held at 6.30 pm. Pretty much a must-do during winter is taking the cable lift up to the Sorbois. Up there you will have a great alpine panorama over the peaks, including the Zinal Rotong. It's furthermore a great area to ski. If you're a hiker, you may also consider visiting the ice cave of the Zinal Glacier between December and January. And then, great is also to drive up to the Barrage du Moiré, this large dam. The water in the lake has a very strong turquoise shine. Regarding accommodation, I can recommend the Hotel Alpina. It has an outer whirlpool, which is really great to bath in during winter. As you can see, the village of Grimmens is a really perfect place with the many things to offer. Number two is the winner of last year's top 10 list. It's in Ticino and it's called Norcote. Norcote lays in one of Ticino's most beautiful regions at Lake Lugano. With its unique location at the bottom of the lake and the tip of the peninsula, Norcote has a very great appearance. Morcote might be a rather small village, but there are some great things to discover in here. Walking along the lake promenade, strolling below the arcades or entering the narrow alleys, Morcote is going to feel very relaxing. However, should you only consider to stay on the level of the lake, then you're definitely going to miss out a lot. As Morcote is built at the hill, you have to hike up in order to explore the treasures of this village. Must visit is this beautiful pilgrimage church, the Maria del Sasso. It's this very eye-catching landmark. The church is not only beautiful from the outside, but also has an impressive interior. With all the ceiling paintings, the church really has its charm. Then also go and pay a visit to the monumental cemetery. It's considered one of the major sites of Morcote. When hiking further uphill, you'll be only getting a more impressive view. Especially when looking down to the church, with the lake and the alpine panorama in the background, you'll understand why this village is so unique. After you hike, consider taking the path of the cross down back to the village center. It's a really beautiful trail. Another highlight of Morcote is the botanical garden called Barco Scherer. It's a garden of wonders at where you'll be taken on a journey through the different cultures of the world. There are various temples such as Thai, Roman, Ancient Egyptian or even Indian ones. A beautiful garden to stroll around and especially this pond with a fountain is what I consider one of the Instagram hotspots of Norcote. This village is not only nice to visit but also offers a great experience for foodie enthusiasts. Enjoy the flavors of the local cuisine by having a pizza or vitello tonato, or otherwise go for southern Italian dishes with seafood. For dessert, I can recommend zabaione, which is whipped egg with wine. In summary, Morcote is a very picturesque village embedded into a wonderful landscape with the lake and the alpine panorama. A great relaxing place, maybe perfect for a romantic holiday? Before I'm revealing to you the number one on this top 10 list, here are a few top honorable mentions. Bergün in the canton of Graubünden, saint saphore in the canton of Vaux, 
Gandria in the canton of Ticino and then also Wengen in the canton of Bern. And now I'm going to present you the number one of the most beautiful villages here in Switzerland. Number one goes to the very, very beautiful village called Iseltwald. We're moving to the wonderful Bernice Oberland, one of Switzerland's most touristy regions. With Interlaken being near, one may think that Iseltwald is going to be a very crowded hotspot for visitors. Good news, Iseltwald marks a spot of quiescence. Iseltwald is located at the shore of the Brienzusee, that lake with its fascinating turquoise color. The village is best to be reached by boat, either coming from Interlaken or Brienz. Alternatively, you may also arrive by car, Parking lots, however, are limited, especially during weekends and summer. Really enjoyable is walking along the lake promenade, which is going to feel very relaxing. The many trails offer you some interesting views, in particular this one here. Iseltwald is full of traditional wooden houses that are very typical for the Bernese Oberland. Whether you're walking around the village center, the many alleys, or even around the bay, you'll be seeing many of them. The bay is definitely a must visit. From there, you will have a beautiful view to the landmark of this village, the Iseltwald Castle. You may also consider renting a pedalo, paddle, or rudder boat to cruise a bit around this wonderful village. While most of the parts of Iseltwald are concentrated at the shores of Lake Brienz, do not forget to hike up a bit in order to get a beautiful view over the village. There are a couple of great photo spots in there. Also, if you're lucky, you might even hear some of the locals playing Alphorn. The trail down to the village is also very scenic, thus do not rush it. Walk slowly and immerse yourself into this wonderful environment. If you're coming here during summer, consider going for a swim. However, make sure to enter the water slowly, as it's likely going to be not very warm. There are a few nice restaurants that you may want to check out. This one at the Strand Hotel, which serves typically Swiss dishes, or the Lake Lodge, which is located at the bay. Surely enjoyable is going for an Aperol Spritz while having the bay and the castle in the background. The Strand Hotel and the Lake Lodge are also places you may consider for staying overnight. The great thing about Iseltwald compared to other destinations in the Bernese Oberland is its quiescence. Majority of the tourists plan their day trips to the Lauterbrunnen Valley, the Jungfrau Joch, Grindelwald, Brienz or Thun. I highly recommend you to stay in Iseltwald for a couple of hours. Should you arrive by boat, then you may even consider combining it with the nearby Giesbach Falls. These rank among Switzerland's most beautiful waterfalls. There are in total 14 waterfalls, many great viewpoints, an old funicular, as well as this wonderful piece of heritage, the Grand Hotel Giesbach. A great classy hotel, perfect for a romantic dinner. Other things to combine with a visit to Iseltwald would be a trip to Brienz or Interlaken, depending from which side of the lake you're traveling from. If you're coming here to Iseltwald by ferry, just make sure you don't miss the last boat back to Interlaken or Brienz. All in all, Iseltwald is a wonderful gem at the shores of Lake Brienz. It hosts a very eye-catching castle, enchants with its many alleys, houses and viewpoints, and just feels very peaceful. Thus, Iseltwald well deserves to be ranked number one among these top 10 most beautiful villages of Switzerland. So these were the top 10 villages of Switzerland for the year 2022. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and moreover that you're going to have great travels in the next year. If you have enjoyed watching this video, please give it a like, leave a comment, share it to your friends, it would be really awesome. 
Also, if you're new to this channel, then you're most welcome to subscribe. I really appreciate that. So that's it from my side. We're going to see each other very soon.